gentlemen, welcome back. This is part two of the GEIAC Masterclass. Uh, in today's lesson, we're gonna learn how to test one of the beautiful GEIAC relays. Uh, if you didn't see part one, it's gonna have a link for it somewhere down below. Uh, yeah, on with the video. Gentlemen, without any further ado, let's get to actually testing this thing. I will be using Protection Suite version 5.3. Uh, I have a Doble F6150 here with me. That's just what I know how to use, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to try to make the tutorial as agnostic of the test set and the software as possible. I really want you guys to get the concepts and the ideas behind it. Uh, in Protection Suite, we're going to get this set up with as much nameplate information as we can. Obviously, I am hooked up over here. Uh, I've got terminals one and two. Those are my time over current trip uh, terminals, right? So when the time over current dial closes, that's what's actually going to trip. And then I'm hooked up on my CT inputs five and six from my test set. Uh, so make a new test plan. Da -da 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 -da. Let's go ahead and put our settings in. So I change the tap down to four, I think it was. So that's our, our minimum pickup. So our tap is four. Our dial is, time dial set to three. You can't see that. And then our curve, this is a 53B curve. I think that's how you do it. I'll have to double check. So when we go to our uh, protection functions and your software is going to vary significantly on how you actually pull in the uh, time over current curve. I might make a tutorial on how to do the math to solve that at some point, but uh, I think we just do curve here. I see 53B. It didn't pull in. Okay, so uh, I see 55, 53. Oh, IFC. There we go. I see 53. So if I do this, if I call that protection, I see 53. Sorry, clicking on the wrong spot. Protection settings, protection functions. There we go. That should pull in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. That works. Great. Sweet. Uh, this is our tap. And then our time dial equals dial. Dial. Cool. That looks good. So uh, protection suite pulled in our curve, which is great. So we don't have to actually solve for anything. I have a known good curve that we're actually testing this to. So that's kind of cool. So uh, the first test, obviously, oopsie, I'm in the wrong tab. New test plan, test steps. There we go. So our first test, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, one thing that we can do, and I've got it hooked up over here with a little ammeter so we can follow along what's going on. We're going to go steady state tests. Uh, let's just do the very basic minimalist manual pickup test. All right. So let's go here. Our expected test point is tap, right? That's our, our level, our, it's four amps, right? Because that's what we set the dial to. Our offset current is going to be, you could really start from zero, but I like to shave this down a little bit. Expected value times, what did I do here? Oh, I'm dumb. Label. There's no label. Okay. Uh, offset duration, current limit, and then our delta current. I just want to do this times... Uh, 1% steps should be fine. Out of our manual, what did we have for an accuracy? Uh, plus or minus 5% of the tap. Cool. Yeah, we can do that. So under test points, tolerance, plus or minus 5%. Cool beans. So I'm hooked up here. So this is terminal 5 and terminal 6. And then my connections here are 1 to 2. So it's my input. And then this is what output that I'm on. Um, and we can double check. I have IA. Actually, that's the one that's currently wired up. So it's uh, this red terminal and that black terminal on the top of the test set. So that's fine. We're going to set this to action. None of this other stuff matters. We can leave everything off. 
Uh, cool. So we should be able to just go. Delta current cannot be positive and ramp is negative. Why is the ramp negative? Oh, current limit. Hey, <laughs> hey. So one thing to note on this, whenever you're doing, whenever you're doing any sort of test, we need to start um, outside our tolerance band and ramp into our tolerance band. So uh, my expected result, the tolerance of my expected result is plus minus five percent. So I'm my my test is running plus minus ten percent. So I'm going to start ten percent below my tap, creep into my my pickup zone, and then creep out of it. And this is not my my recommended way to do this test, but I just want you to show that it's it's totally possible. So we can manually ramp this, just bump the current up a little bit until the dial starts to turn. So we're going to look really close at the little line on the dial, and we're going to increase the current until it starts to turn. So I don't know about you, the ammeter here seems not super accurate. I, I don't I don't trust that. I trust my test set a lot more than I, I trust the little analog ammeter. But uh, there you go. I just want to have that in so you can sort of see what we're looking at. It looks like it's starting to curve, uh, starting to spin around this point. So I'm going to record that. Is that within tolerance? Sure. Yeah, that's within 2%. How accurate was that? That's as accurate as your eye is. Ideally, what you would want, instead of, oh, just vaguely, hey, it started to spin, that's not a great, accurate way to do that. There are better ways. So number one, what we can do is a dropout test. Instead of just watching the little line on there to see when it trips, what we can do instead is I can set this up to see at what current it drops out at, right? Because the pickup amount should be a point where it has reached equilibrium with the reset spring, essentially. We'll do this. So this will be manual dropout. And again, we're doing the dropout of the time over current element, not the instantaneous. This is not a required test, but this is just another way to determine what the uh, what the pickup is going to be. Again, our expected value is the tap. Our offset current, in this case, what I really want is to start above my pickup and then drop into my tolerance band and see when the dropout is, right? So in this case, my offset current, we're going to do uh, that times two, and we'll do this for, I don't know, a couple seconds. Saturation, that's two seconds. Um, our current limit in this case is going to be 0 0.9 because we're starting well above our, our pickup amount. We want the contacts to actually close, and then we want to clock when it drops out when that contact opens because that should be roughly right around the equilibrium point the the disc has to move a lot less to do that than it does for my eyes to see when the disc actually stops moving it's just a different way to do it we're going to talk about this more in a second and i will show you the preferred way that i do it in protection suite at the end but uh, i just want to give you a, a quick rundown on that so again i want the sense connection to be the, the trip contact actually opening so we're going to do it this way. Uh, so I'm going to manually hold the disc closed. We're going to start the test, and then we'll start ramping the current down until it drops out, and that's what we're actually going to record. So the contact is currently closed, and I'm going to ramp down until that contact opens, and that's it's going to clock the dropout, the actual amount of current at which the trip contact stops being closed. And we got to go pretty, we can go pretty quick right now, but then we're going to go really slow once we get towards the uh, our tap four amps. It's not a great way to do it. <laughs> it's definitely not my preferred way, um, but. Uh, I just, depending on your hardware, depending on what software you're using, this might be the easiest way to do it. And it's it's relatively accurate. 
It's reasonably accurate. So right there, we're at 4 amps. Obviously our ceiling unit requires uh, current through the trip circuit, and we don't have that. So there we go, dropped out right at 4 amps. So the ceiling unit is not part of this yet. It's just that contact on the disc. Uh, we'll get to the ceiling unit and how that works later. But um, there we go. Our dropout, fairly accurate, 3.84. Is that what we got on our manual creep pickup? 3.92. So they're different numbers. It's fairly accurate, but they are different numbers. That is something to be aware of. How would I determine the exact amount that it takes the disc to be essentially stationary? We've defeated, we've, we've reached equilibrium with that, that reset spring. Fortunately, uh, and I know for a fact, RTS and the Omicron software uh, have a very similar thing. We're going to use a pre-built macro in here that is specific to electromechanical overcurrent pickups. So we're going to go steady state tests, uh, inductive pickup current. So this actually tests the amount that it takes to trip and drop out. Well, it closes it like we did initially where we hit it with 8 amps. Closes it all the way, backs off a little bit. As soon as it sees that contact open, it starts to ramp back up. And so we know we can average the dropout and the pickup very closely in very short order. Um, best pickup test. That's what we're going to call that. Um, it does both in very, very short order to determine essentially the average between the two. So our average here is tap, right? That's what we want our expected value to be is 4 amps. Just to recap, I had a weird cut in this. Okay, so a quick word on uh, this one. I am actually reshooting this part because I screwed it up the first time. So there's a couple steps. Um, again, our, our target here is the is the tap. It's the actual pickup value. In this case, it's 4 amps. Um, our initial current, so we're just going to start out way, 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 way above the tap. Um, and that's to give the, tar the, the time over current unit time to actually physically close all the way. So we're going to do that for about 5 seconds, 2 times for about 5 seconds. I'm going to probably work and it doesn't you can bump that up um, our ramp start current so this needs to be again our tolerance is here plus minus five percent our test needs to start in this case above that and then we're going to ramp down until we're in the tolerance at that point it should drop out the the uh, induction unit trip contact should open we're gonna watch it open and then we're going to immediately turn back around and start ramping back up. So uh, with all this set up, and again, you can do this on whatever software, whether you're using RTS or the Omicron one or Protection Suite. I just dropped my phone. They should all have something similar to that. This is the uh, INDPUI, Inductive Pickup uh, Current, Inductive Pickup Current uh, Test. And let's run it and see what we get. There you go. Hopefully you can see on the on the ammeter that will show on the screen uh, how it actually operated because they work great. And this is a much more consistent answer because we're getting the, the dropout value and the pickup value on that induction unit should work. Um, it should be more accurate and a little bit more repeatable. So now we need to do the time over current test. So that will be the, in protection suite, it's the talk plot uh, macro. So we'll just name this one um, time over current trip timing. Whatever you want to call it, doesn't necessarily matter for this. Now on here, I can use either, I can either just put in random current values or uh, we can check this box and use multiples of the tap. Now our tap is four, so we're gonna set this over on the overview page. Our offset current is gonna be zero. We wanna reset to zero. Offset duration uh, doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, if we have a reset time, if you wanted to time the actual reset, there is a formula for figuring out what the reset time should be. Doesn't necessarily matter. 
um, again, our max on time. So this is how long it will it will keep pushing current after we have uh, completed the test. And over here, we'll select our curve. This is IAC 53 curve. So that looks good. Again, we're going to uh, make sure that we're pushing between 5 and 6. If the impedance is too high, and I'm actually going to change my setup real quick here to take the the ammeter out of the circuit just because um, there's a 5 amp ammeter and I don't want to push this much current to it. Anyway, so our test points, uh, 2, 3, and 4, that's typically what I do. Uh, 4, bear in mind, 4 times the tap, in this case our tap is 4, right? So this is going to push 16 amps for 61 cycles, it's kind of a long time. So. Uh, if you're doing something like the the highest tap on this relay is I think like 16, you got to be aware like you're going to be pushing a, a decent amount of current for a relatively long time, um, especially on these flatter slopes. So just be aware of that. The reset time, I don't know. I <laughs> I kind of cheat it. I, I cheese it a little bit. I'll actually like reach my finger in there, and you'll see me, and I'll reset between the tests. Um, so I don't know, give me two seconds to reset between the tests. It takes a little bit longer than that, but it doesn't really matter. Now our test points, we need to find that here. Uh, our test times at the relay. So again, the manual is telling us, hey, use our settings and we'll tell you what they are. Um, here they're saying, should it operate at blah, blah, blah. So at a, at a known good point, that's essentially what this is, at a known good point, um, it should operate within plus or minus 7%. So that is the tolerance that we're going to use out of the book. Plus or minus 7% on the tolerance. Um, and the only thing to note with that is our max on time needs to be longer than uh, that tolerance of plus or minus 7%. Okay, uh, with all of that said, we're going to run it. We should see the dial move and the contacts in the back close. And then I'm going to manually reset the dot. Oh, oh, oh. I forgot to take the ammeter out. So. One more try. So it's resetting, and now I'm gonna, just going to manually push that all the way back. It's resetting, just going to manually push it back so we don't have to wait for the, the reset. And there we go. And that went almost perfect. I cannot believe that. Um, so we're a little bit low on our tap two which happens quite a bit, honestly. Like, that's a, a fairly frequent um, issue. So we've got two things that we can do here. <laughs> I could either just change where I tested at. We could do two and a half, three and four, or three, four, and five times the tap value. Or I could, like, just arbitrarily say, like, oh, I want to do this at 10 amps, 12 amps, 16 amps. The other way is to actually adjust it. So I will show you how this adjustment is done. So we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and we're gonna bump it just a little bit. And I think we need it to go. Direction we need to go. Uh, we were a little bit low. So we're below there. So I expect it to take longer. Which means what I want to do is I want to make this spring tighter. I want to have more tension. And so not all electromechanical relays are like that. you got to sort of gauge where the, the dial actually is. So we're going to go a little bit clockwise. Just a little bit, just a smidgen. And then we're going to try that again. So remember, the spring adjusts the time. If I was worried about getting that pickup dialed in, I would adjust the drag magnet on the front. Take that little nut off the bottom. There we go. We're in on that one. God damn it. I keep forgetting to hit the reset. There we go. 
Okay, just manually pushing the disc all the way back to the reset position. Okay. And look at that. Perfect timing. I mean, obviously not, not perfect. This is a, I think, 50-year-old unit, 50-plus-year-old uh, <laughs> unit. But we match our, our expected curve very, very well. So that's exactly what we want to see. All right, so up next, we are going to do the instantaneous trip function which on our test plan. And again, very similar to the way that we did the pickup. Uh, there are a number of ways to do that, both in protection suite or however you're going to do it. Um, for this one, we'll do a pulsed ramp and I want to show you something uh, so pulsed ramp essentially this is just gonna go it's gonna put a little bit of current and then turn off and then put a little bit more current and then turn off and then put a lot more current and then turn off and then put a lot more current and then turn off until it uh, senses that it tripped so we'll call this our instant overcurrent uh, pickup So this should be, oh, I didn't define that setting. So if we look over here, it looks like the top of that bolt, top of that bolt's right at 40. I'm not sure if you guys can make that out or not, but uh, our connections, I do need to change our connections one to three here. So one to three should be our instantaneous trip. Terminal connections. Current over here looks good. Our we'll put this in our settings. We'll 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 do this we'll do this correctly. So our instant ay 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 is forty. That looks good. So we're gonna go here, this is gonna be action. Now our sources out of my F60, my Doble F6150, I can't run 40 amps continuous, so I have to put that in as a transient. So that'll go, allow me to go up to 60 amps on this one channel. I can do some other cool things if that doesn't work. Uh, our offset's gonna be zero, that's fine. Initial current is going to be, uh, this is our setting, instant. Initial current equals max expected value times 90%. Oh, oh, let's double check our, this needs to pick up, uh, pick up at plus minus 10%. That's great. Perfect. So that just means this needs to be a little bit further out. So we'll go 0.85, so 15% low, 15%. That's 5% below my plus minus 10% tolerance band. Uh, pulse duration, let's do five whole cycles for that, and then we'll wait for 10. Our delta current, so this is how big our steps are. Uh, I usually just do 1%. Makes everything pretty easy and it's gonna be reasonably accurate. Our current limit, in this case, we'll do uh, plus 15%. So that's our expected value, which is this, which is just the instantaneous setting, uh, times 115%. So that works. And then our tolerance is plus minus 10%. And that should work. This might be a little bit spicy for this output. Uh, might be a, a little bit too much impedance for this output, but uh, we'll see what we do. Hey, it worked. And we can see our We can see the flag drop on the instantaneous unit on that one. So that, that worked really, really well. Uh, within 7%, we did 1% steps. So we started outside our tolerance band and we ramped up until we were inside our tolerance band and then tripped. That's so everything works great. Um, and again, we use connections one to three. If we were wired up to the back of the case um, with that jumping bar in there or the, the shorting bar in there, we could have done either 
one to two or one to three because two and three are essentially one terminal. Cool, so that worked great. And again, if our impedance was too high for that, what we could have done, and this it'll vary relay to relay, setting to setting, um, and test set to set to test set. But on this one, if our impedance from five to six was too high, and the test set was having a hard time pushing 40 amps into that to get it to trip, uh, we would have been able to connect to terminal four on our uh, test paddle. We would have been able to go four to six, and that would have. Uh, picked up our instantaneous unit with a little bit less impedance. So that's why that's there. Just keep that in mind. Uh, cool. So that's our instantaneous pickup. Now, <laughs> I've got one more that I have to do for this. And this is a NIDA requirement. So if you're not testing per NIDA requirements, if you're only doing this per the manufacturer's instructions, um, we can forego this one. But I do want to show you what happens and how to do this. We are gonna do a, a linear ramp current. And this is the dropout on the instantaneous unit. So we have to do this instantaneous OC dropout. Do have to do this per Nita and I can pull up the spec. Uh, probably editor me, put the spec up on screen right now. Uh, so we're gonna go test points. The dropout should be roughly as accurate as the pickup. There's our 40 amps. And uh, if you're wondering, the reason that I do this, I take the extra step to put the settings in here and then in here bring in the, the, the setting call out, essentially the variable, instead of putting in just like 40 amps. Um, I can use this test plan over and over and over again and all I have to do is change this one page, and then I come to my test plan, and I can run all these in order, and everything just works great. So that's why I do that. Uh, cool, so we're gonna be on one to three, and what we wanna do is we wanna check the dropout, right? So this needs to start at above 40 amps. We should start it above the tolerance band. It makes it run a little bit longer, but whatever. Um, our offset duration, we don't want this to be very long, because again, this is pushing more current than our test sets continuously rated for. Um, we'll do that for like three cycles, I guess. Our delta current, we're gonna do max expected value times, we'll do 2% steps, cause there's not, does it need to be that, oh, not 20% steps, 2% steps. And our delta time, we're gonna go down pretty quickly. Through, so there we go. Um, so this, this little icon here is actually upside down. So we're starting at 44 amps and we're gonna go down 2% steps until the contact drops out. That's the plan. Um, so we sense the dropout when this goes to action. And then plus or minus 10%, that should all be good. So we're gonna go run. I hope the test set doesn't get mad at me for pushing too much current. And that's why we do this test, because that's a fairly different result. So uh, per, this is the NIDA MTS, instantaneous overcurrent electromechanical relay. We determine the pickup, we determine the dropout and determine the time delay. There's no time delay on this one. So I really just need the pickup and the dropout. Now, if I go down to test values electrical, Pickup and dropout of electromechanical targets should be in accordance with manufacturer's published data. Operation and protection elements for devices listed in section 791 b 1 through 25 should be calibrated using manufacturer's recommended tolerance. If we look at recommended tolerance here, this is a sealing unit, right? We're looking at the instantaneous. Gradually applied current until pickup at plus or minus 10% of the minimum calibration. There should be no more than 5% variation on repeated pickup tests. Be sure the target has been reset after each test. There is no tolerance here. There is no, hey, it needs to be within this amount of, uh, this percentage of the pickup. It's just a dropout. So I need to verify that it does drop out but I don't care what the value is. So I have to do the test. I have to verify that it happens. 
but I don't care what the result is. Thank you, Nita, for that. It makes absolutely no sense. It's literally meaningless. Most people don't do this test. I want to say that. Uh, and it's funny because it's carried over the way that it's worded in the spec, the way that it's worded in Nita ATS and MTS. Uh, you have to do that dropout test on uh, microprocessor relays as well. No one does it. It's an absolute waste of time. But it says it on the spec. You have to do it. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is we need to check the seal-in unit. And so we'll see here, uh, pick up the unit should, the seal-in unit should pick up between 75 and 100% of the tap value with the main contacts closed. We can see on here, on the actual unit itself, I don't know if that's gonna be in focus, but the ours is set to two amps. The other option is 0.2, I think it described what those do earlier. If not, I will try to cut that in now. Editor me, please do that. Um, so the pickup should be between 75 and 100% of the tap value, which is two amps, and it should drop out at 25%. Now bear in mind that this is in series with the main trip contact. So here are my trip contacts between terminal one and terminal two for my induction unit. The instantaneous unit doesn't have a seal in. It's just the time over current unit, the induction unit. So between terminals one and terminals two, I've got this little guy right here, which is just another coil. So this runs on the DC tripping current, not the AC from the CTs. It's actually the DC tripping current uh, to your trip circuit. This will totally work on AC, but we test them on DC. Um, so I've got a DC current source hooked up between terminals one and terminal two from my from my test set. And so what we're gonna do is uh, steady state test. We're gonna do a manual current ramp because just, this is just so much easier to do manually. Um, this is gonna be our ceiling pickup. Now my tolerance on this bad guy is uh, 75 to 100% of the tap value. Our tap is two, the other option is 0 0.2. Um, the dropout, the main unit contacts, the ceiling unit should remain picked up. Uh, so the, the disc closes, right? Starts to send a trip to the breaker because the disc is closed. The induction unit, which is this one above terminal five, closes these two, con well, one of these contacts, right? And then that allows current DC current to flow from terminal one to terminal two through that coil. And so if we open the induction unit, this seal in contact should be still closed. Trip current to the breaker will allow to, will still be flowing through the relay until all current drops out um, until the breaker opens realistically. All right, so with all that said, Tolerance is a uh, pickup of 75 to 100% and the dropout reduce the current to 25% of the tap value. Uh, ceiling pickup, the terminals that we're actually pushing current into are here. Uh, now on the Doble and Protection Suite, I check this little box to do DC current and I have to set my sources back because I don't think transient works very good here, but that's okay. Um, so IA out of my test set is now a DC channel. And so we'll be pushing current in terminal one, out terminal two, which you can't see that on that camera because I'm zoomed in so far, that's fine. This will be our action. Um, now I made a setting in here because this is something that can be changed. Seal in, on this case, is two amps, which I think is more common. You typically see the two amp setting. So our offset current in this case, we're gonna do max expected value times 0.5, right? Because that is outside our pickup band. Our pickup band is minus 25%. Offset duration doesn't really matter because this is a manual test. Our current limit in this case is going to be SI for seal in. Delta current uh, is pretty wide, so we're gonna do, I don't know, 10%, doesn't really matter. We can do 5%, let's do 5%. Delta time, again, doesn't, doesn't really matter. So now, before I start this test, I have to manually close the contact on the relay, the main um, time over current contact on the relay. Otherwise, it's not gonna work, right? Because I'll be pushing current through 
this open contact or these two open contacts. That doesn't really work. The test set's going to get mad at me. It doesn't like to do that. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to manually close the induction unit. We already know that that works, right? We tested it. So I'm going to manually close that, and then we're going to push current through the seal-in contact, and we're going to watch the seal-in unit pick up. I didn't put a tolerance in here. That is the other crux of this. So for these, I always put in um, min max. Our max on this one is going to be our max expected value. And then our minimum is 75%. So there you go, just like that. Let's try that again. So reset. We have to hold that contact right here. We have to hold that all the way operated, all the way closed. And then we start our test current. We increase until it picks up. And there we go, that is that test. So the next one, the last one that we have to do, the very last test for the GEIAC relay is the dropout. Um, so open the main contacts. So again, we've hold, held the main contact closed. So we've held the disc closed. The seal in has picked up, it's, it's closed, right? And then we open the main contact and we ramp that DC current down until it opens up, until the seal-in contact opens up. And that needs to happen before 25%. Um, they do give us a tolerance on that one. So what we'll do is we'll insert a copy of this. So we got our seal-in dropout. Which seems sort of counterintuitive that we do this anyway, but uh, it is an important test. So the only thing that we do different here, obviously our tolerance is minus 25% and it has to be above, sorry, it has to be below 75%, which is 1.5 amps. It has to be between these two numbers. So it has to drop out between these two numbers. Anywhere between those two numbers should be fine. Um, so our offset current, we're just gonna start at two or our seal in, which in this case is, is two. If, uh, if it's the other way, obviously all these numbers will work for 0 0.2, which is fine. Um, so our current limit, we can just go to zero, it doesn't really matter. And then our max expected value, make this one negative so that it ramps down. I think we're good to go. Uh, we're not gonna have any sense connections because we don't have any connections hooked up to the test set. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I gotta hold the disc closed. We're gonna inject two amps. It's the ceiling unit's gonna pick up right away. And then we're gonna ramp down and you're gonna look for, very specifically, the contact right here. You're gonna look for that contact opening up. So we manually close, push two amps in, Ceiling comes in, we ramp our current down. That's where we dropped out. And there we go. So our pickup and our dropout were both within the tolerance specified in the book. We test the hell out of this relay. That was way more than we actually needed to do. Um, so the manual pickup, uh, we don't need that, right? Because we did it, the talk timing test, or sorry, we did the our inductive pickup test. We actually don't need this manual dropout test. Don't need that one. And we also don't need this instantaneous overcurrent because there's no tolerance for it. Realistically, if you're doing these out in the field and you get good results 
on all three of these, it works. That relay is in fantastic shape. This potentially 100-year-old relay is in very, very good shape. All right, gentlemen, that's it for the GEIAC relay. Uh, at this point, if you've watched all of these videos in their entirety, you should have a fairly good grasp on what to do if you see one out in the field, if you're the testing guy. Uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, obviously leave them down in the comments. Do all the YouTube stuff, like, share, subscribe. I definitely appreciate it, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.